I think most of us have a sense that payday loans are probably not the best source for a loan, that they probably charge a lot of money to those people who need that cash really badly. And what I want to do in this video is, one, explain what they are, but even more, do a little bit of math to understand really how bad uh, of an interest that they do charge. So the way that it works is, let's say that you know, I, I, I need to buy my wife a nice gift uh, for her birthday. That's tomorrow, and I want to borrow $500. So I want to borrow $500. I would suspect that most people aren't borrowing it for some type of a gift. They're desperate to make the rent or uh, pay the utilities or, or buy food or, or who knows what else. But whatever your reason, you need to borrow $500. And I would suspect that you have very little in your bank account. Otherwise, you wouldn't go to the payday lender. And they say, all right, Sal. We're open to lending you $500, and we're not going to do all of this deep uh, uh, research on, on how good of a credit you are and all of that. But we want a couple of things. One, we want to know your pay stub and your pay date. So let me see. They want your, they're going to want to see your pay stub, pay stub. They're going to, they want to know when you're going to get paid. So your pay, I guess we could call it your payday your payday. And they might want some recent bank statements some recent bank statements. And the whole reason why they want these things is is they want to know, you know, even though your credit might be horrible, that you're going to get a you're going to get a a a your salary or you're going to get a payment from your employer probably in 2 weeks on your payday. And then you're going to be good to pay back the $500. And to ensure this, so one, they're going to make sure that you have a job, that you, uh, in your pay stub, maybe you make uh, uh, $1,000 every two weeks, or maybe you make $2,000 every two weeks, so that you're good for this. So maybe it's, you know, maybe you make $1,500 every two weeks, so they like to see that. Maybe your payday is two weeks from the day that you're borrowing it, borrowing the money. So two weeks, two weeks from today. And then your bank statement shows that your bank kind of goes up $1,500, then you pay the rent and the food, then it goes back close to zero, then it goes up to $1,500. But they want to see that this $1,500 is hitting periodically. And they say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you the $500 today. What we want to do is you need to write us a check. And on that check, let me, let me draw a check right here. So this is a check that they want you to write. We want you to write a check for not $500 for every $100 you borrow so for every $100 borrowed borrowed you want I want you to pay us back another $25 so $25 extra and at first you might say hey that's not bad that's 25% interest it's high maybe it compares to some interest to some credit cards but this isn't 25% a year this is 25% for 2 weeks and at the end of this video we're going to do a little bit of math on what that actually count turns into on an APR or an effective APR basis and these numbers are not crazy these are actually very typical for payday loans so if i'm borrowing $500 i have to give them back the $500 in 2 weeks plus $25 for every $100. So I'm borrowing $500, so I'm going to have to do plus 5 times 25, or, or $125. So I'm going to write them a check for 500 plus 125, so that's $625. $625 right there. I'm going to write a check. But obviously, I don't have the money in my bank account right now. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be going to the payday loan. But what I'm going to do in the date, I'm going to forward date this check. I'm going to put the date, let's say this is the first of the month, uh, instead of, let's say it's January 1st, instead of January 1st, I'm going to put 116 and, you know, whatever year I might be doing it. So I'm forwarded, this is two weeks from today. Two weeks in the future. And then, you know, I'm going to sign, I'm going to sign the check. And, well, maybe usually you. Sign, I'll sign the check, and I'll write it's for payday, payday loan, and I'll write six, I'll write six hundred. Well, I'll write out the words six hundred and x at twenty five, et cetera, et cetera, and then I have my little information here, and I'm going to give them this check, and what they're going to say is we're not going to cash this, we're just going to keep this nice little check for us, and when your payday hits, you have an option. You can come back to us and give us six hundred twenty five 
$625 in cash, and then we will give you back this check that is uncashed. Or if you don't show up, we are just going to cash this check. So one of these two things are going to happen. But effectively, they're going to, if, this, if you didn't lie to them, they're going to essentially charge you $625. And you can imagine it is risky for the lender, because these are people with uh, you know, maybe shady pay stubs. And obviously, they're desperate, so they weren't good at managing their finances. But they're doing their best to ensure that once that payday comes in, once that, that, that payment from the employer comes in, that they get first dibs on the money before the person can pay their rent or their utilities or their food. And so that's the general idea behind it. Now, we started off saying that it's probably not a good idea. And you got a sense of that, because we're essentially paying 25% interest for every two weeks, not for every year. But let's think about what that is on an APR basis. So let's say we're paying, so $25 for every 100, that's literally 25%. When you say per cent, cent that root means 100, right? Century, 100 years. So per cent, it literally means per 100, 25 per 100. So this is literally 25% interest. Or we could write it in the traditional way. This is 25% interest interest per two weeks. Per two weeks. So if we were to just calculate a simple APR, a simple annual percentage interest rate, annual percentage rate, percentage rate. And you might want to watch the video on that to understand that that just takes your 25%, your 25%, and then multiplies by the number of periods in the year. So we have 52 weeks per year, but this is every two weeks. So instead of multiplying it by 52 weeks, we're going to multiply it by there's 26 two-week periods in the year. So times 26 two-week periods periods per year. And this is 25% per per two weeks. And when you multiply this out, this is equal to, let's get the calculator out. So you have, well, I'll just multiply the numbers. I won't do this as a decimal. 20, let me turn it on. 25 times 26 times 26 is equal to 650%. We're paying an APR of 600 and 50%. So if you thought the credit card companies were charging a lot of interest, charging you a, uh, I don't know, a, a mid-teens interest rate or a 20% interest rate, this is 650%. It's a, it's a, a, an order of magnitude or two above what even credit cards charge you. So this is a really, really crazy annual percentage rate. And this was just a simple annual percentage rate where we multiplied it by 26. This isn't the effective annual percentage rate or the actual mathematically correct one. To do that, we would actually have to take, and you might want to watch the video on this, if you were to let that just compound, and you can imagine if you're the payday lender, you are essentially getting that compounding if you keep lending your money out. And if you lend the interest you get from the last person, you lend that out at the same rate. To figure out that effective annual percentage rate, you do 1.25, right? 25% plus 1, to the 26th power. We have 26 of these periods in a year. And what is that going to be equal to? So we have 1.25 to the 26th power. And then we get this crazy number. We're going to want to subtract a 1 from it, not that it's going to change much of our math. So minus 1. And we get 320. Well, let me be very clear. We're going to, we're going to be essentially, this is 300, this is 329 times our money. So if this was a 1 here, that would be 100. So this is, let me just be clear, this number right here, that number right there, it's such a high number, it's hard to fathom. If you were to actually let money compound at this rate, and usually they wouldn't let you just, they, they make you at least roll over the principal. So this may or may not be accurate, but the actual payday lender, if the money, if they actually do are able to roll over the money at this rate, they're going to have 329 times their money. Or if you write it as a percent, it would literally be Three, let me make sure I get the 32987. Literally 32,987%. Or after a year, you will essentially have to pay roughly 330 times your money back to the, to the payday lender. And obviously, they don't let you compound like that. But this just gives you a sense of how ridiculous this interest rate is. I mean, you might have heard of the term usury. 
usury. In the past, usury really meant any kind of interest. But now, in our current cultural context, we associate it with just an unreasonable level of interest. And that threshold might be different for some people. Some people might say it's unreasonable to pay 20% interest, or 30% interest, or 40% annual interest. But I think everyone would agree that whether you look at 650% or 33,000%, these are usurious and unreasonable interest rates. So you really, at all costs, unless it's you know you, your life depends on it, you want to avoid these payday loans.